By law, the most time that any child can spend detained is 120 days. And that's a long time to spend away from friends and family. Stop. In Kevin's case, we saw the painful example of what that kind of stress can lead to. It, it was a rush. Like, it just came like that. And then everything just started shaking to me. And I didn't want to give up. I was just being stupid. I would never kill myself. I got a lot to live for. But it's just all the act. I was trying to get attention. After giving him a little time to cool down, Jamie spent some time with Kevin to try to determine the root of his anxiety. Having spent as much time as Jamie has with troubled kids just like Kevin, she knows the one thing that has the opportunity to help him calm down. Nine times out of 10 when they're angry like that, it's not the issue at hand, it's something else. He was pending placement, he was upset, he was scared, you know. So what does he do? He goes off and starts tearing up my room and everything else to get the attention. But when it's all said and done, ultimately, can I talk to my mom? We'll try tomorrow, Kevin, all right? We'll try tomorrow. Listen, don't get all worked up. We'll keep trying, all right? Yeah. You're gonna be all right? Oh, really? That's what we're talking about, Mama. I know you do, Kevin. My mom, she did come to visit me one time, and she promised me she's gonna visit me almost every weekend, but she, no, she don't come. You gotta keep it together, Kevin. Okay? You gotta keep it together. You got to. You don't have a choice. I just feel like breaking down. My mom, she really wants the best for me. But at the same time, how could I get the best out of something if she's not gonna be there to talk to me about it? All right? Give, give me the shorts to wrap a blanket around you. I'm just waiting for that day to get out of here. I just wanna leave. The degree of family involvement varies from case to case. Most juvenile service professionals recognize family involvement as one of the key factors in gauging the potential success of a kid's rehabilitation. If you stand to the side of somebody, you're not in line. Fellas. I'm not nervous at all because it was just a misunderstanding. The judge won't listen to my mom, but once she hear my side of the story, and she'll know where I'm coming from. She'll understand too, and so will everybody in the courtroom. I need Kimyata Durr. Good morning, Kimyata. How you doing? Ready to court? Right this way, please. Hopefully, I'll go home. And then I'll be with my baby. Right this way, Kimyata. I'm just going to explain myself from the beginning to the end, leave no parts out, because it's two sides to the story. This young lady is charged with runaway, is that right? Correct. All right, Kimiata, have a seat up here, please. Kimiata, you're charged with running away. Tell us what happened. Well, Monday, me, my boyfriend, and my cousin had the baby, and we was out all night. We didn't call nobody. Uh, I think Tuesday, I dropped my daughter off at her grandmother's house because I was getting agi agitated with her. Uh, this is not my first time getting agitated, so I Agitated kept... with your mother? No, my mom had nothing to do with this. It was my daughter. She was sleepy, I was getting cranky, everything. So we was out late. I just needed some me time, away from the baby, away from everything. After that, we didn't call nobody or let them know it was okay. So of course, they're gonna make them reports because they didn't know where we was at or I didn't call anybody. 
Well, Kimiata, since I think a large part of what the outcome of today's hearing is likely to be is going to involve what your mother has to say, do you have anything you want to say to her to influence her decision as to whether or not she thinks you should come home with her today? Well, the being disrespectful, cussing you out, when we get into it, I know I, I do it, everybody does it. Uh, but this time, I really have changed. Yes, I slipped up, but it's not like I'm continuing to do the same things I was doing when I was 14 years old. So I have been making progress. Judge, that's all I have. Mrs. Guzik? Kimiata, where had you been with that baby all night? Over my cousin's house. We spent the night over there, because it was late. Is that a habit of yours, to take this baby and drop oh, it off in different places? No, that is not a habit, no. Mm -mm. And how old's your boyfriend? He's 18. Is he in school? No, ma'am. Are you seeing a pattern here? You're not detecting a pattern of doing things in your life that isn't in your best interest? But I can't look at what he's doing. I got to do for me. Yeah, no. we going together, but people going to do what they want to do. I have no further questions, Judge. All right, Kimmy, I didn't even have a seat back there. Next witness. Judge, I'm going to call Kim Foster to the stand, please. Ms. Foster, so the court can get at least a better understanding of who Kimiata is. Tell us about your daughter. She's always had issues. I've always tried to address those issues through doing and being the best mom I possibly could. Unfortunately for Kimiata, she needs more attention than I can give her because me and my husband both work. To the point where we are now, it started with being disrespectful with me. After that, we laid down the law. Either you abide by our rules or you need to go somewhere else. She chose to go and be with her godmother. It's fine. I know where you're at. You're safe. We'll work this out. And you were okay with that. In fact, you presented her with that as an option. Exactly, because I trusted that person, and I knew she would be safe with that person. Okay, so she didn't leave the house without your permission, did she? If there's one thing that Senior Judge Mary Beth Bonaventura has learned in her 26 years on the bench, it's that every case is different and you never quite know what to expect. You can sentence someone to death, you can sentence someone for life imprisonment, but to try to figure out how to put a family back together in about 30 minutes after you read the reports of a certain pattern of behavior that probably has gone on for years is a very tricky thing to do a very important thing to do, and wow, the impact we can have if we get it right. So far, we know Kimiata's side of the story. But what will her mother say when she's asked to describe why she thinks they're in the situation that they are today? She chose to go and be with her godmother. Okay, so she didn't leave the house without your permission, did she? No, she didn't, because I gave her an option. I said, you abide by the rules, or you can go. And then at some point, you called the police and reported her as a runaway. OK, now, she didn't call. She didn't check in. She didn't do anything. So the same pattern with me, she did with the godmothers. And I knew then that they were just on the run. They were, uh, and she neglected to say, drinking, smoking, partying, having a good time. So now I need to step in, and I have to do something to keep her safe along with keeping the baby safe. So I put in a missing persons report. I want it to stop. I want her to, be, to go to school. So then when she gets out into society, she won't be another statistic. She won't have a child who I have to take care of because I want her to raise her own daughter. Ms. Foster, would you be willing to take your daughter home if the court provides a supervision? I don't believe it would be successful. Kamiata. First of all, you talked about that you were disrespectful and you cussed your mother out. You said everybody does it. I got news for you, sweetie. Not everybody cusses their parent out, okay? So that's first and foremost. Secondly, you going out and taking your baby and staying out all night and you needed some me time. I got news for you about that. 
When you decide to have a baby, there is no more me time. The me time goes out the window when you decide to have a baby. And I agree with your mother. You can't be bringing a boy into the house because you're just going to get pregnant again, which leads me to my next point. Do you use birth control? I get the shot. Your mother's shaking your head. No, yes, ma'am. I try. I even took her to the, I'm not going to take the shot. That's not good for me. I'm not going to take the shot. I didn't okay. want to take it so, in the first place. All right. Do you think you need to have another baby? No, I do not. So what are you going to do about birth control? I might as well go ahead and take the shot then. Anything else? Kids are having sex. And I think as a nation, we need to really look at kids having kids. And somebody's got to stop it. I'm not saying I can do it single-handedly, but someone has to talk to children that there is abstinence, but if you're going to have sex, there's condoms and all other forms of birth control. Let's try to be as responsible as we can. Mrs. Guzik, anything? Well, Judge, I think that Kimyata in her youth is, is a very selfish person. Um, and I think we're seeing that and hearing that today. What I haven't heard today in here at all is I miss my baby, I want to go home. I think Kimyata's going to keep doing what she wants to do. I think she's too young to understand what's in her best interest and the court needs to step in to assist her. Judge, Kimyata says she wants to go home, she swears she's going to do better. I agree, we've all heard that before. I would just ask that the court consider the available options the court has, given the fact that we're dealing with two children, not just one. Thank you. At this point, it seems doubtful that the judge will decide that Kimiata's side of the story holds weight, that it was just a simple mix-up. What isn't clear is whether or not she'll decide to let Kimiata go home with her mother, and if that's what her mother wants at all. Uh, today, what the court will do is find probable cause to believe that this young lady is in need of services, that uh, no matter where she's placed, that Kimiata be provided parenting classes, that she begin the process of working on her GED. Uh, if the parents decide not to take her home with them today, I'm going to order that she be placed on or before 4 p.m. today at Alternative House, uh, and they'll provide those services. And last but not least, I'm going to order individual and family counseling. And this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Kim, I'll be in touch with you. I'll let you know what they, uh, what they decide. Okay? Let me talk to you guys outside. Okay, I can't have a word with her. I'm working on it. We'll see what we're doing here. Okay. Okay. I love you. Okay? I love you. I love you. I love her. I love you. Dang, Mom. Oh, man. Unlike her mother, Kimyata's stepfather isn't certain whether or not placement in a residential treatment facility will be in Kimyata's best interest. It's not an easy decision for parents to make, and Don Ruck knows some difficult choices lie ahead. Is that at 4 o'clock today, Kimiata is going to go to a home where obviously there's a lot of structure like you were talking about. Right. Or she could go home and be released to you guys today with the list of interventions and services that the court said. And we're still at odds okay. on that view. They're talking about it now, and I know deep inside, with my dad's help, that I'll be going home and be placed on house arrest. Kim, what is, is her mother? What's, What's best, best for her? her? Yeah. As Kimyata's parents struggle to reconcile their points of view, Jamie pays Kevin another visit. This time, she brings good news. Well, Kevin's going to placement finally after being with me for quite some time now. Um, he's quite happy about it, and I hope that it's a positive experience and we won't be hearing of Kevin anymore. <laughs> it's a, a real good placement. It's a campus. I'm going to be going to school all year round there. I'm probably going to be there for nine months to a year. And basically, the goal there is to get us on the right path. I thought it was going to be forever. Feels like forever. Yeah, I'm sure it does. But it's just a temporary hurdle. You can get over it. You can make yeah. it through it. I had talked to the, one of the guys. His name was Gary. And he told me that as long as I stay on the right track and get my grades up and all that, I will be going home. Hi, Kimiata. Why don't you come on out here? I'll talk to you out here. Um, unfortunately, your mom said that 
you need a lot of structure right now and that your history of breaking the rules is something that's not likely to change. So the court's order that you be placed at the alternative house in Gary today uh, at 4 o'clock. So until uh, maybe some counseling and things can take place between you and your mother, um, you know, while you're still underage, if you can't go to your mother, um, you're going to have to be in placement. Okay, hang in there, hang in there. It may help and it may not help, but I can't allow her just to get away with whatever. And she's just saying these things because she is in trouble. And that's just the pattern. That's been the pattern. And so this is the beginning, this is the start. Despite everything that's gone on recently at Lake County Juvenile, court officials recognize that what Kevin needs is the proper care, rehabilitation, and proximity to family. As it turns out, he'll be headed to the same treatment facility his brother's been attending for the last six months. Okay, Kevin. Take care. You too. Best of luck to you. Yeah, my little brother's been there since January. And hopefully, my mom is there for me when I get out this time. and She'll come visit me in placement and all that. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Good luck to you, Kevin. Kevin definitely has potential. If he can really search his heart and want to make the changes, I, I believe he can do so. It, but it's truly up to him. I hope he's successful. That's all I can say. Unlike Kevin, who's excited to be going into placement, Kimiata's left to contemplate the fact that her time away from home will also mean time away from her baby. But as we're about to see, her story isn't over just yet. Just two weeks after leaving for her placement facility, Kimiata receives some surprising news from the home front. It turns out her parents have reconciled their differences about where Kimiata and her baby should live. They've requested a review hearing with the court, and so now Kimiata finds herself back in front of the judge. Mother and Kimiata have met and talked, and Mother believes now that it's in Kimiata and her best interest to have Kimiata released back into Mother's custody today. Ms. Foster? A couple of weeks back, you indicated that you felt you really couldn't commit to taking Kimiata home with you. Tell us what's happened since then. During that short time, I have made phone calls, done some research, finagled and moved around schedules so that there could be someone in the home because I felt it was the best interest of Kim Yada, along with the family and her daughter for her to be more at home. Why did you do all of those things and make all of those changes? Because I love my daughter. Okay. Have you met with Kim Yada or talked with her since she's been away? Yes, I have. Tell me about that. Yada understands that it was her behavior that put her in this situation. She has some maturing to do. But other than that, she's been fine. She needs to raise her baby. That's her baby. That's her responsibility, along with being a productive adult. And I believe being at home, along with the structure of the court and any provisions made to help her, would achieve those. That's all the questions, Judge. I'd like to say one thing. Go ahead. Um, from the statement that the lady, I don't know your name, about my baby. What I haven't heard today in here at all is I miss my baby, I want to go home. I want to be with my baby. I haven't heard any of that. I felt very, very bad on that statement that you said, and it hurt me really bad because <laughs> I do love my baby a lot, and it's a lot of young girls that's my age that don't care about their baby and just go out and just do whatever. But I have tried a lot in my progress, and that really hurting me so bad because I do love my baby. But yes, I know I was wrong, and I would love to go home and start over again because I know I can succeed. That's, that's all I just want to add. I just want Kimiata to understand my concern is always for the baby. She's a helpless 
individual. If you're acting out of her concern first and foremost, that's the only thing I want to see happen. So if even my comments make you do that, then I've accomplished what I want. Mr. Rock, anything else? Judge, I think Kim Yada has done what we hope happens when somebody is not released home to their parent. And that's that they think not just about what they did, but what the people in this courtroom told her. The structure's in place at home. Kim Yada's ready to take responsibility for herself and her child. And the court should reconsider at this point releasing her uh, to her mother today. I think for her and for a lot of kids her age, it's growing pains and we just have to figure out how to help her get through that. Today what the court will do is grant your request in order that she be released and returned to your custody. Um, and I'll order that she have individual and family counseling to resolve the issues that are obvious from the last hearing so that we don't find ourselves back here again. All right, I'll order that you be released to your mother and this hearing's adjourned. Good luck. We're going home. Good luck to you. Thanks. In there. Take care, okay. Thanks. Man, I'm super, super, super happy. Too happy. <laughs> Man, just waiting to get home to my baby. That's on my mind. It focused on my life. I think that probably the two weeks away in a placement facility gave her additional time to think about it. And two weeks is a long time to be away from your baby. So I think there's probably been some life changes going on. And the mother went to the lengths of changing their work schedules, which is commendable. And I think, you know, they're a decent family that's going through some bumps in the road. And it looks like they're on the way to smoothing those out. Hey, you can Hi. Go home. Where's your baby? Her grandma. Oh, the daddy's house. I have learned, and I just did a complete change. Put my baby first, focus on my education, get my GED. You're a good kid, Kim Yana. You'll do just fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's in the best interest of the baby along with Kim Yana, and hopefully she'll work the program and she won't be back in here. It's still up to her. She still has to work it.